Good afternoon, everyone. It is Brian here from Strigler Photography. So, exciting, exciting news. After a week, a week in like two days, I think, of having sick kids here with me at the house and at my office, um, I am free of sick children. They are all back at school, and I am capable of doing work and getting things done and it's exciting because I have a lot of stuff to get done and a lot of things on my mind and everything else. So yeah, so finally, um, I think I hit with some kind of, I'm guessing it was the flu, but it just, they had a hundred something temperature for like a week and it was just not much fun. So anyway, I am here now and I am ready to share some information with you guys. I'm going to try and get this thing to full screen. I'm going to see if I can make it happen. Okay, wonderful. So, um, I have uh, I've been looking. So I, I don't know where to start with all this. I've been doing weddings for like eleven years now, and I'm always trying to change, always trying to get better. And recently, I had the realization that I want to keep changing and even doing more stuff. Um, so I am trying to better my service for my brides and grooms, couples, um, their family members, whoever, you know. And so I've been thinking about how I can better treat them, better serve them, what I can do for them. So anyway, with that thought, I thought I would share um, kind of some thoughts on just the different levels of service. So kind of uh, what you can expect, you know, from different uh, vendors and just what you should be looking for and all that. Um, so hopefully this is going to be helpful. And the big thing kind of to take away from this is not all vendors are the same. So uh, within your, your wedding coordinators, within your venues, within your photographers, within your DJs, within your caterers, um, within each one of those areas, the companies are going to be very, very different and offer different levels of service and depending on what what you're wanting you need to know what level of service they are offering and that'll help you make a decision when you are booking all of these vendors so let's jump into this so i've got a little metaphor here um so i'm just gonna be saying that they are they're all like Oh, that'd be a simile if I say like they are all different restaurants and we'll be looking at three different types of restaurants to compare the three different levels of service and those would be like your buffet um, in the middle you kind of have like a family diner or just I don't know a regular restaurant like um, Applebee's or I don't even know um, but something kind of in the middle and then you have these like super high class restaurants um, where you're having to wear like probably a jacket or a tie maybe to even get into them. I don't know. So let's jump into it. And before I go into this, I do want to say there is nothing wrong with any of these levels. Um, I am not bad-mouthing any of them. I'm not saying one is better than the other. I'm not saying you're a horrible person if you only hire people that do this. I'm not saying that at all. Um, I'm just pointing out that uh, with each level, you should expect different things. I mean, honestly, we all throughout our lives use these different levels. So like um, like a month, a month ago, maybe, I took my kids to a buffet. Okay, I knew what I was getting into when I went into that buffet, and there was nothing wrong with that. We went in there expecting what we were expecting, and we got what we, we got. Um, so nothing wrong with that. And then like, Another time, I may take my kids to a decent restaurant, and it's a completely different experience. Probably will not take my kids to any of the real high-end stuff because they will just lose their minds, and it'll be a waste of money. Um, so we all do that. So I mean, it could be in different things. It could doesn't just have to be restaurants or weddings, but we all use different levels of services throughout our lives. So there's nothing wrong with it. And I also understand we all have a budget. We all have a set amount of money that we have to spend on things. So again, I'm not judging you. I am just here to inform you and so you can make the best choice you can. Um, and I already said this. Yeah. So just 
know what to expect. Um, so also, so you can plan accordingly. So if you have a bu this budget set for this amount, um, but you really want this level of service, maybe you have to change your budget and you're going to have to plan accordingly to get there. All right. Now that I've said that so no one thinks I'm a bad person, let's go into the buffet. I love buffets. I, I really do. I used to love them a lot more when I was younger because I would just cram a lot of food into my face, just a lot of food, and kind of make myself sick, to be honest. Um, but that's what buffets are. They're really cheap, and you just get a lot of stuff. I mean, you can just go eat as much as you want. There's a lot of variety. Um, like Golden Corral has like everything you can possibly think of and you just keep going and get more and more and more now does that make the food great no most buffets are serving pretty low quality food i mean that's the only way they can stay in business i mean if they were if they were spending a ton of money on the food then they couldn't give you all the food it just doesn't make sense that way um, the same thing kind of goes with the service there. Um, they can't really pay a bunch of people to serve you with as cheap as they are charging. So like uh, the pizza buffet I went to, I think there were like two, maybe three people running the entire place. So like they were back behind uh, making the pizzas, working the cash register. I think one of them would go out occasionally and clean things up. Um, but it wasn't like we had a waiter there taking our order and then bringing us stuff and giving us refills. It wasn't like that. We got up every time we wanted anything. When we wanted drinks, we got up. When we wanted food, we got up. Um, we even cleaned up our own table. So, I mean, it's, it's what you expect with a buffet. Okay. Now, I'm mainly talking about photographers, again, because I have that information because I am a photographer. Um, but the, again, this information can kind of be applied to all vendors um, and just kind of what you're going to expect from them. So with the buffet type photographer or the buffet DJ, don't expect a lot, okay? Um, in general, I'm, I'm saying here that if... If a photographer is charging under a thousand dollars, they're probably going to be one of these buffet photographers. Again, that's that's a generalization. I don't know that for sure. There might be some buffet photographers that charge more, or there may be some really great photographers that are providing great service at under a thousand. I am just giving you kind of a general ballpark. Um, so, in general, what do you expect with them? They will show up the day of, and they will take photos. Don't expect a whole lot more than that. Don't expect a lot of guidance. Don't expect a lot of artsy stuff. Um, don't expect them helping you a lot beforehand. Don't expect meetings or phone calls. Um, just don't expect a lot from them. I mean, you will get photos of the day. Um, will they be amazing photos? I don't know. Maybe, but probably not. Um, at the very end, they'll probably just give you digitals on a USB, and you can do what you want with them. Now, again, I am not bad-mouthing anyone if this is what they do. Um, this is actually where I was when I started off a long, 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 long time ago. So, like, when I first became a photographer, this is definitely, this definitely described me. I mean, I was uh, a, a teacher, so I kind of was doing photography on the side. I didn't have a whole lot of time for extra stuff. Um, so I basically, with a few weddings I was shooting at that beginning point, I would just show up, I would take photos, I would edit them and I'd send them back to the person. Um, and that would really be about it. And I didn't have a lot of skills at that point. I didn't have a lot of knowledge. It's just a kind of a beginner stage. It's where I was. So I was that, I was there kind of a, like the first few years I did photography. So if that all sounds good, if that's what your budget is, whatever, then that's just kind of what you have to expect. All right, so moving into that middle range. So this is the the nice restaurant. I mean, it's it's okay. This is where you might take your family on a Friday night with all your kids, and it's kind of loud and crazy, but, I mean, it's still okay. Um, so uh, the cost is going to kind of be in the middle. So not cheap like a buffet, but something you can afford to do like every week. That's the kind of restaurant that we're looking at here. Um, 
you're going to get a good amount of food. I mean, it's not nowhere near the quantity that you're going to get for uh, a buffet, but the quality is much better. Okay, and same thing with the service and the experience overall. So you're going to sit down and you're going to order. They're going to bring you drinks. Um, you're going to actually order off a menu. They will bring the food out to you. The food will be looking much nicer than it, and then you just slapping everything on a plate at a buffet. Um, and overall, you're going to have a decent service and decent experience. It's going to be a probably a pretty good time. Um, and there's a, that's that's pretty good for most people. So in the photography world, I would say this: uh, if your budget is fifteen hundred to three thousand ish, um, you're probably going to have this type of photographer. So they're probably going to have a meeting with you before before they get hired. Um, and they're going to do a little bit to help you. So, again, that varies from person to person. But they're probably going to create a schedule for you. Um, they're going to probably do engagement, an engagement session with you. So you're going to have some interaction with them besides on the wedding day. And they will try and give you some help um, on the actual wedding day. So overall, again, pretty decent experience, pretty decent quality. Um, you're going to get... Be, get a pretty good uh, overall feel for this. And as far as their skills, they're probably pretty good at this point. Um, I mean, it's definitely not going to be like the buffet photographer where you're, it, it's going to, I don't know, where it's going to look like you could have taken them with a cell phone. That's kind of where I'm looking, thinking with a buffet photographer. Um, so this is where I kind of fell when I started taking weddings more seriously. And again, I was still really busy as a teacher, and um, I stayed in this range probably for like four or five years, I would say. So I started doing a little bit more for my clients, but I still didn't have the time to just go out and do a ton of stuff. Um, I started studying uh, photography more and learning new techniques and trying new things out, and you know, I just had some experience at that point, so I was able to help. Um, but I mean, I wasn't just like going out of my way to do a ton of stuff for them. So my people were, were decently happy, I would think with what I was doing, but I mean, they weren't just like blown away. Okay. And sorry, I forgot to say, if anyone has comments, feel free to comment. I've just been, I've been rambling on for probably like 10, 15 minutes now, and I'm not even checking to see if anyone's watching or saying anything, which is fine. So I'm not going to get into my whole uh, backstory of how I stopped teaching and got, became a photographer, but this is my fourth school year um, where I'm just a full-time photographer. So I would say probably the last five, six years of photography is when I started moving into this upper upper range and starting to be able to do things for my clients. So let's talk about that high-end restaurant. Now, and again, this this kind of depends, I mean, what you're talking about. I mean, there's still going to be different levels of high-end, um, so it's definitely more expensive. So not something you would probably do all the time. So it might be something only for special occasions, uh, maybe once a month, but probably not. Um, overall, you're going to have great food and great presentation. So the service is going to be amazing. So um, you're actually going to have a, a real waiter, someone who's very t uh, talented, skilled, good with people. Um, there, they might pull your chair, the chair out for you. They might even put like a napkin on your 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 uh, lap. Um, they're going to know a lot about the food, and they're going to be able to give you advice on it. Um, the atmosphere in the place is amazing. It's probably like nice music playing in the background there aren't screaming kids everything looks nice and feels nice and it's just a special treat to go there and afterwards you're just like oh that was awesome that was nice i really enjoyed that what a wonderful wonderful time we are having um and that's what that's where i want to be i mean that's what i'm aiming for with my wedding couples i want them to walk away from it just blown away i want them to be so happy so thrilled and just have this i don't know um where there's no regrets nothing that they wish was different 
Um, that's the, that's what I want for my couples. I want them to have that experience and I want to be the person that gives that to them. So let's talk about what you can see probably in a photographer. Um, probably 3000 above again, depends on where you are. I mean, uh, if you're in New York, it might be like 7,000 and above. Um, they're going to have a ton of experience, lots of skills, lots of knowledge. They've been doing this for a while. And they're going to be able to use all of that to create that wonderful experience for you. Um, they're going to take as much burden off of you as possible. They're going to take away all of that work that you'd be doing on your own. And they are going to do it themselves. So, you know, like the buffet, you have to get up and do it all yourself. Um, with this level, the photographer or whoever is going to do as much for you as possible so you are just sitting back and relaxing and enjoying the day. Um, so you might have several meetings, and in general, they're going to guide you through the whole process. And it's more of a full-service thing. So remember, the buffet photographer just showed up um, and gave you digitals at the end. Um, this level of photographer is going to do everything they can for you. So meetings, engagements, bridles. Um, helping you create albums and prints and getting them hung in your house. And they're doing all this stuff for you. And it's going to be just an overall much better experience. You're not going to have to worry about anything. You're not going to have to do anything yourself. Um, it is all taken care of for you. Um, so like I said, I've been doing, I've been doing this kind of level, I, I would say for probably six years now. But still, I'm trying to even improve things more. Um, my current situation is I am trying to uh, be more involved, uh, more of that taking the burden off of my couples. And I'm currently working on getting my office really cleaned up and nice so I can have meetings there with couples. And so I can just make the album process easier, the photo selection easier, and I'm just trying to make it better. Um, for a while, I've been having to meet in like coffee shops, and that's okay, but it's just not the environment or the experience I want my couples to have. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so that's kind of where I'm going. Um, cleaning up my office where I can have meetings there and show people stuff and create their album with them um, and just do everything I can to make the experience better for them. All right. So jumping into the last part. So how do you decide where to go with these levels of services? I mean, are you going to try and hire everyone that's the highest level possible? Maybe if you're extremely uh, well off and you have a lot of money to spend. But I would say most people are probably not going to be at that level. Um, so here's how I would think about this for each vendor you are hiring. And I've talked about this before, but this kind of goes into it again. So how much do you care about that? So if you care very little about it, you probably aren't going to need the highest quality of service. You might be able to get away with the buffet. Um, but if you care so much about it, if you love it, if it's all you care about, all you think about, you probably want to go for that middle level or that higher service. Um, and we talked about this in a different video where you were making your budget. It's the same thing. So think about what you care about and put your money towards it. Um, the next thing to think about is your general budgets. I mean, it doesn't matter how much you care about something if you just don't have the money to pay for it, um, which is unfortunate. I mean, again, there's a video where we talk about how you can save money and get money to get the things you want, um, but we still all have to consider that budget and what we can afford. Um, what are your options? So start looking out there and seeing what's even available. Are there even, in your area, are there those high level services even available? Um, with like maybe your caterers, are there anyone, any caterers out there that provide that highest level? Um, are there any DJs in your level that provide that highest level? Um, you may not know, or maybe there's no buffet people floating around. I've had that happen where people just had a really low budget and they just couldn't find a photographer um, to to fit in their budget. So, I mean, that's very rare because there's usually a lot of photographers that are willing to do it for extremely cheap. Um, and when you're talking to these different people, just, I mean, ask them what they do. 
and then try and figure out what level you think they're in. So I mean, ask them, okay, what are we? What are you going to do for me before the wedding? When on the actual wedding day, what are you going to do for me? And you know, how much help are you going to provide? And how much am I having to do myself? And those are all great questions to ask. And I, I think you'll be able to figure out what type of service they are trying to provide for you. Whew, okay, I am. I think I'm, I think that was the last last slide. Um, but I really do think this is important, guys. Not all vendors are the same. You're going to get different levels of service um, from each one. And again, I, I say that because I've been there. I provided, when I was a beginner, I provided that buffet service for several years. I was in the, the middle, and now I like to think I'm in that higher higher level of service of what I provide for people. Um, so know what to expect, know what you can get from that, know what you care about. I think all of that is extremely important in having the best wedding day you can. Um, again, guys, if you have questions, comments, feel free to reach out. I hope this video was helpful and hopefully you've already started to kind of book some of your vendors and hopefully you've already found those ones that meet exactly what your needs are. Anyway, it's good to not have sick kids around. <laughs> I'm getting a lot of stuff done. A lot of editing, a lot of videos. Anyway, all right. So I might be back again this week making another video. If you have a question, something you need me to cover, feel free to reach out in any way. Uh, comment on this video or, you know, uh, send me a personal message. I'm down for whatever. All right, guys. Thank you so much. And I hope, what is today? Today, Tuesday? I think. Where is the... Today is Tuesday. It took me a while to figure that out. I hope you have a wonderful Tuesday and a wonderful rest of the week. Uh, Valentine's Day is coming up. Maybe I'll make a video about that. I don't know. All right. See you guys.